Hey, big timers and crackheads, what is going on? It is uh, Whale D Shark here today with another stream. Uh, we are doing the journey to the unique hourglass, uh, which should be a lot of fun. I do believe that we have quite a number of time wardens uh, that actually do need to be maintained. So essentially, I do a daily stream of managing uh, a personal metaverse on the big time on the big time game uh, that comprises of 126 spaces. Uh, as well as 79 Time Wardens and increasing. And all of these spaces and all of these Time Wardens are geared towards a single purpose of eventually crafting uh, the most rare Hourglass within the entire game, uh, which is a unique. I know that there are a bunch of other people, a bunch of other organizations uh, trying to do this. Whether we get there, only time will tell. Um, but I do think we're very well ahead, uh, given the fact that we do have uh, quite a number of uh, of extremely rare time wardens. So, the stream this stream takes place every single afternoon, unless there's no time wardens to manage in my sweatshop. Um, the stream can go anywhere from half an hour all the way to an hour. We had a wonderful time with Undisputed Noobs, uh, as well as Jayar and a bunch of other streamers yesterday, and it was a bunch of fun as we talked about more of the economics behind the game. Now, if any of you guys go onto the Big Time Twitch channels and take a look, you will see that the majority of the channels mainly focus uh, on the actual gameplay itself. But what people don't understand is that there are many, many different ways to play big time. And, you know, for those of us, uh, I guess, who are a tiny bit older, uh, we do enjoy uh, the more commercial or the more merchantile aspects of the game, which is, you know, really having a bunch of different factories and being able to craft and build NFTs that can later be sold in the marketplace. My niche happens to be just Time Wardens, so I don't do any armories, I don't do any forges, simply because I enjoy the liquidity of the market within the hourglass space itself. During the stream, if you guys do want to post any questions to chat, feel free to do so. We are currently streaming to Twitch, as well as YouTube, as well as Kick. Uh, so feel free to drop feel free to drop any questions, feel free to say hello, would love to see who's in the audience, uh, but why don't we get this started? So this is our level 4 Transcendent Time Warden. The Transcendent Time Warden is probably the, is currently uh, the most expensive Time Warden in the game. I was able to accrue quite a number of them, a total of 8, uh, from anywhere between $14,000 to $20,000 a piece. Uh, but at the same time, and hold on, let me just make sure we don't have a level up here. But at the same time, uh, you know, the latest, uh, I guess, potential sales price that was on the market was roughly for about $34,900. Um, so, you know, I, I talk about this in all my streams, but my main purpose right now really is just to make sure that I'm leveling up my Time Wardens as quickly as possible so I can get a competitive advantage. So you'll see me use quite a lot of mod chips to actually do this role. And my main target here is getting that plus 50 XP. Uh, given that we are not crafting something of high rarity, uh, and again, a lot of people will say that this is a waste, but given that we're not crafting something of high rarity, what we really want to do is make sure that we try to get at least, not at least, but we want to try to get at least 60 XP, so just now on the 10 and the 50. Uh, but if not, usually you'll see me keep rolling all the way till I get what I need. Um, or looking for value, right? So it obviously looks like RNG isn't working for me right now, so what I am going to do is I am going to hold it at this uh, 50 XP and 5% time, 5% uh, less time crystals. 5% of this is only 12.5 uh, time crystals where it took me 40 to roll. So, you know, I'm not going to re-roll again. I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and lick my wounds and take what it is. So, yep, that's the first one done. So you see also that I've segmented out all of my time wardens by rarity. We have the transcendence first and the exotics. Uh, then after the Exalteds, and then after that, the Mythics. This just makes it significantly easier for me to manage. And there we go, we have an Uncommon Hourglass. And these things, I believe, are selling for like, just now the um, the Common Hourglasses are selling for, I saw, I, when I was looking on the market just now, they're roughly selling for about 12, they're roughly selling for about $12 a piece. Um, and after that, these are actually selling for, I believe, 70, so. You know, over the last three days, we've managed to craft something that has a high amount of liquidity um, and basically seven, and basically could pretty much liquidate it on the market almost immediately. 
um, for $70. So kudos to the game devs uh, as well as the uh, economists within Big Time for developing such a, such an interesting game. So this is this is an ideal situation. What we're looking for is like a total of 100% XP, so we get double the amount of XP that we originally crafted for. All right. Let's see. So we've completed all of the transcendents, and you'll see that they're act the other transcendent time wardens are actually uh, crafting things of higher rarity. Uh, and in that sort of a circumstance, uh, you know, we should see the fruits of our labor probably within the next two or three days here. All right. So, oh, sorry, I missed one, uh, which is why I always do a run back later on as well. But we do have an Exalted, I believe, that we're going to be able to farm as well. Hopefully it is a common, so that the next one that I can craft is an uncommon in the next... Um... Yes, it is. So basically what I'll wait is I'll wait for it to reload, uh, because it takes some time. I guess the servers aren't uh, at peak uh, performance for the time being. So what we will do is we'll wait a tiny bit. Uh, so that I can actually craft the higher rare. Oh, don't even need to wait. And we also got to level up. Very nice. So basically, what I'm looking for here is to craft the higher hour ha the higher level or higher rarity hourglasses on the higher rarity um, on the higher rarity time wardens. Uh, because in this sort of a circumstance, essentially what it's going to do, uh, it's going to allow me to um, level up my higher rarity time wardens at a faster rate. Yeah, that's what exactly what we want. Nope, nope. Uh, skip rarity, dude. Uh, it's very rare that we get something like this, but essentially this is almost like a perfect roll. Uh, we get fifty percent of the XP, fifty percent more of the XP that we get from um, doing a doing an uncommon hourglass, and at the same time, this is going to turn out a rare hourglass. Uh, I believe at the same amount of time as an uncommon. So. This is perfect. Wish I could get this all the time, but unfortunately, RNG is relatively difficult. I, I've noticed that RNG on the on the uh, mod chip spins uh, have actually been a little bit more difficult after the latest patch as well. Uh, not getting as much good stuff as I used to. All right, we got another exalted over there. Again, if, if any of you have any questions, feel free to reach out, feel free to post in chat. Uh, more than happy to answer any of the questions that you might have pertaining to the game. And we have a rare, perfect. It's extremely difficult to time any of this given the fact that, you know, again, there's there's a lot of factors that play into the timing of, of, of when these hourglasses come to fruition. So we need one more rare over here before we can uh, craft, a, craft an epic, I believe. But we're going to upgrade to the next level. Uh, and then after that, uh, we will craft a common hourglass, which is a little bit of a waste. Up. Oh. Missed the 50 XP, can we get it here? Nope. 25% faster, again, that's a, that's a beautiful thing to have. We're gonna keep the 25% faster and hopefully get a XP uh, on this side over here. Yep, missed it again. Let's try one last time, because again, uh, sometimes the RNG just doesn't work out. 10% XP, 25% faster. I think, again, we spent quite a number of mod chips on that. Uh, and it's better just to lick our wounds and move on to the next. I do believe that the majority or the a lot of the um, a lot of the higher rarity time wardens are actually crafting things of higher rarity, so they are probably going to take a couple of days. Uh, we have a couple of exalteds here and there, but I, I do think that the bulk of what we're going to be doing today is probably on the mythics and the legendaries. So just so that you guys know how I structure this, uh, I have a significant more amount of mythic and, oh, there we go, we got our rare. So we're gonna go and craft, I believe, our third mythic, third third epic hourglass um, over the past week. Uh, again, it's extremely difficult to get there. All right, and we got a level up as well. Uh, nope, I think we need one more, let's, uh, let let me see. Hold on one second. Let's uh, let's wait for it to. Uh, 
I thought I had three already. Anyway, but I, I did see that we had another uh, exalted uh, time warden down below. So we're gonna, just gonna craft a common hourglass with this. And then hopefully by the time we get to the next exalted time warden, uh, it would actually have worked out. So since we're crafting a common, you know, I, I'm a little bit more stringent on the RNG. And what I'm looking for again is that 50 XP, yeah, a 50 XP minimum boost, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. So let's try it probably about two more times and then let's see what we get. But very much looking, yeah, it doesn't look like we're gonna get anything. So we're gonna go with the 20 XP and then have to move on. So, oh, yeah, there we go. Let's see what, let's see what we crafted. Again, given that there are so many hour, I have so many time wardens here, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, for me to plan ahead. Um, off stream, I probably do visit this uh, this sweatshop uh, probably, you know, another two times a day uh, just to make sure that everything is up and running because every single hour that you leave something that's just running like that um, is basically a waste of resources. Let's see here. So we got the 50 XP and we have 25% faster. Ideal. Wonderful. So we'll continue with that. And then after that, hopefully one of these will have a rare so we can get moving on our epic. All right, uh, why don't we do this? So I don't want to, I don't want to end up uh, putting a rare ma manufacturer. Oh, oh dude, there was a couple more. Uh, I don't want to end up putting a rare or an epic Hourglass crafting on a legendary. So what we'll do after this is we'll keep these three exalteds down below and We'll move across to the others first just in case because I want to check and see um, If we do have a rare uh, hiding among those mythics or legendaries and then after that we can actually craft it on exalted instead Again the name the name of the game at this point in time really is uh, level up your time wardens as soon as possible. I'm gonna keep the 50%. I'm gonna try my luck here. Oh, there you go, nice. So the name of the game right now is if you are gunning uh, to be a major merchant in the game, I believe that the name of the game is essentially we need to try level up our time wardens uh, as quickly as possible and have a sizable number of them so that we are able to craft um, in a meaningful manner uh, when the game takes off. Right. Let's see. A nice level up here. Upgrade to next level. There we go. Level four. Usually, you know, again, usually it's a little bit of a waste to craft from scratch. Uh, but the thing is, the market, the market price. Oh, that's beautiful. The market prices for common hourglasses have been going a little bit bonkers. Uh, there was a point in time where I could buy hourglasses and here's a glitch. Let me guys show you a glitch. So here's a glitch within the game right now. Oh, oh started working again. But usually, uh, you know, there's a glitch where you can't run because it keeps uh, it keeps putting you back to walk mode. Um, but anyway, for the common hourglass market for the time being, I think what we're seeing is, you know, again, it's right now probably at about 12, $12 a piece uh, versus the $7 that it originally was like one week ago. Langa, dude, what's up? Did you just get up, my friend? All right, let's see. One, two, it's double horizontal, triple adjacent, quad right, quad left, 50% XP. That's exactly what we want to see. Again, your RNG on the lower tier level hourglasses are going to be significantly better um, than on the higher tiers. How are you doing today, dude? We had a crazy night yesterday. I decided to stream again, and uh, it, was, it was really interesting though because a lot of the uh, the big thought leaders pertaining to economy um, within big time came across. Uh, we had also a major streamer raid us a bit. Uh, it was interesting, dude. Anyway, dude, I think you can see from my map up there, we're gonna have a lot of things to do. Uh, so this stream will probably go on for Another 20, 30 minutes as we get our work done. Langa, dude, are you playing this? Are you playing big time? Uh, no, are you playing big time as a merchant or are you just are you just leveling up? Yep, so we can actually do this now. Three, four, five, confirm. 
Have you been playing with DC, dude? Oh, come on, come on, no, no. I do it again. People would love this, but let me do this. Uh, hold on one second, let me see. Again, as you go up higher up the hourglass, hourglass rarity crafting, the RNG just tends to treat you like dirt. So, you know, it takes a couple more spins uh, to get everything sorted out. But yeah, let's, um, let me see here. All right, I, th I think this is the best that we're gonna get. Unfortunately, it's not great. 20% is, is, again, 20% is not 50%. <laughs> but as long as we are working this, uh, as long as we are working those Time Wardens, I am gonna keep this one alone for a bit uh, because I do want to see whether or not we have a rare uh, or something else uh, running in here. And you know, once I get to Mythic, I, I don't really mind. I mean, it's, it's I'll craft a common, I, I don't mind crafting uh, uh, uncommon, but for the majority of the time, you know, I, I just really want them running all the time. Dude, did you solo grind, Lang? I've been trying to play on solo for quite a while. You know, I just I just get so frustrated. Craft items, reroll. I think once they have a better partying system, I will definitely play more uh, of the actual game itself. Dude, RNG hates me today. I'm like not, I'm, I'm barely getting any 50%. Oh, there you go, triple adjacent. I'm gonna keep this, and then after that, I'm gonna spin for a 50, um, or even like a 10%, but I don't, yeah, 30%, all right. This is why, dude, this is why I cannot wait till I get my third bonus spot, uh, simply because of this, right? Is it gonna get plus six? Are there any other games that you're playing, dude? Oh, there we go, we got a rare, perfect. So basically I can actually go back, uh, I can actually go back and, uh, and, and, and do my exalted with the, uh, with the rare, and we'll do that in a tiny bit. Level it up, there you go. Nice, and we're almost close to level four four as well so we're gonna get that on this over here 10% quad right quad left 50% thank you very much dude I was actually dabbling and I did this off stream but I was playing um, castaways have you ever played that I mean I'm always gonna dabble in all different sorts of web 3 games just just to take a look uh, that was actually pretty fun. I mean, I mean, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those pixel games where you're like stranded on a raft and you have an island. Uh, and then after that you're just building up resources. And I, I think there's some tie into NFTs or something, but it's not extremely prevalent. But there are a lot of good games that came out. I really wanted to try, um, I, I think is again, I, I, I've been putting all of my resources into this, but I really want to try out Parallels. Have you tried that yet? I mean, the graphics look extremely cool, right? It's a TCG. I think Nightmare, Nightmare currently is all over it at the moment. I know, right? <laughs> but the only thing that you see being streamed on Twitch is Gods Unchained, dude, right? Any, the only the only TCG that has um, that has some form of following on Twitch seems to be Gods Unchained, and it's interesting because very often the time, I know that for block I know that for um, for big time it's probably the highest streamed uh, Web three uh, Web three game on Twitch. I mean you, you're gonna see anywhere between five hundred, you know three hundred to five hundred people viewing at any single time, um, but. Gods and Chain, you're like, you know, if, if if it's if it's if it's a good night, you're you're seeing like a hundred people watching, which is which is interesting. If they don't show me any special economy, I'm meh. Dude, so you must love this. This is this is like super special economy, man. 
the complexity of this game again the the economic complexity and intricacies of this game is 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 really what pulled me to play this i mean if it was just a regular mmorpg or dungeon crawler I, pro I definitely probably wouldn't have touched this wow we got two rares all right let's see 4800 definitely gonna give me a level up right and nope not even close let's see here So we're gonna craft the epic very soon, but we, I want to craft it on. Um, I want to craft it on my higher rarity time wardens uh, rather than doing this double horizontal, triple adjacent, quad right, quad left, please. Fifty XP, we'll take it, and let's see if we can spin for another fifty. It's like gambling with an actual ROI. All right, let's see. And I think what if uh, I will check the number of rares that I have uh, towards the end so that I need to understand whether or not I need to have another Time Warden that's free uh, to be able to craft two epics. That would be, sorry for the pun, but epic. I don't think we do. Dude, it was, this would have been so much easier if they had kept the, uh, the regular base cap, I think, of three. How many do I have? Hold on one second, let's see. Uh, let me see. So I got only four at the moment. I need another four. Fifty XP, sixty. We're gonna take it, right? Again, these are all mythics, uh, but yeah, it's in it's Lang is saying it's going to be interesting how the economy does when they expand the game with spaces earned when hunting uh I, I think it is i think it is going to be interesting but at the same time you know i think they're going to limit the rarity of the space that actually does get um that does get that does get that does get dropped right but i think the main thing when i'm looking at the game ecosystem as a whole right now there really does need to um sorry about that is that is this upgrading upgrade to next level oh did i skip two? Oh. Beautiful. Why is it still showing me this? Nope. You know, I really do think that, um, you know, th there needs to be more benefits to the players who are actually playing the game itself rather than paying to, paying to earn, right? So right now, if you look at myself and you look at some of the other whales within uh, within big time, we're, we're literally paying to earn, right? Uh, we're paying to earn, we're playing the game, but in a very different manner. Um, but at the same time, you know, again, there should be some way to help people graduate from grinding in the game to doing what we do, right? It doesn't need to be easy, but at the same time, it, it does need to be challenging, but at the same time, um, you know, there should be that option to be able to do that. So I do hope they do drop spaces and, and everything else pretty soon uh, to the people who are grinding. Because that's the way you're going, dude. This is like the worst RNG that I've ever had. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna keep it because I don't think it's it's not getting better anytime soon. All right. Let's see. Yeah, but they're they're like they're 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 not even close. I, I mean, this is this is supposed to be open beta, right? Is this open beta? It's closed beta. Um, I think it's, uh, again, I, I, I think it's still a while. Is this alpha? It's not even beta? I mean, for, for an alpha, I mean, this is way ahead of anything else within the space. Again, I, I mean, bar, I mean, barring if you talk about indie games, right? But, you know, again, indie games aren't, you know, aren't going to be the sustainable bread and butter uh, of the Web3 gaming space. So it really is titles that can branch itself across to uh, almost like a AAA status uh, that where you're really going to get that adoption. Um, and it's interesting because I, I'm sure like you, I, I'm on I'm on Twitch quite a bit these days, uh, just taking a look and just understanding what the reception is to the game. Um, you know, the general sentiment that I've seen from streamers uh, and audiences from the mainstream have been largely positive, right? I think the, uh, the, the play to earn aspect of the game itself is just a bonus for a lot of the 
right? Which it's and, and that's the way it should be. I think they still got a while. They still got a ways to go, my friend. Uh, they still got a ways, ways, ways to go. Um, I mean, this is much more playable. I mean, you're talking about uh, you're talking about the guy who came in when Gods and Chain, right? And I think you can say that Gods and Chain was was almost the very first was among the first cohort of Web3 games in the space and coming in and seeing the quality of Gods and Chain back then and seeing where Big Time is right now uh, it's it's very interesting right because this is actually playable uh, Gods and Chain is extremely playable at the moment right so I think you know but even back in 2021 when we were looking at all of these different games that were emerging um, Dude, these games that were all emerging, uh, I mean, I was hanging out with you in 2021 all the time. You know, dude, the games were terrible, right? It was all uh, I, I, Ember Sword and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, it was all just hype. And I mean, what was that other Illuvium, right? I heard that one, I heard that one went to total shit, right? Uh, it was all just a lot of hype and a lot of promises that, that never actually were realized within a game, whereas you had these games that were actually being built. Um, and do you remember the amount of hype? And sorry, this is not going to give me anything, so I'm going to... Do you remember the amount of hype that was going on around Illuvium? How much money do those devs... How much money does that company have to keep going? I didn't play it myself because, again, I'm not going to invest in a game where the reviews are are, are, are so bad, right? Um, <laughs> well, what was that? What was that? Uh, what was that other game where, uh, where where it was almost like a Pokemon game where where they totally effed up? I met the person who eventually bought it out um, earlier last year in Singapore. They had over two and they held, so I think they blew it. Dude, are you serious? Yeah, Pixelmon, I met the person that actually bought it. I was like, are you crazy? Uh, there was um, there was a Web3 event and a lot of the uh, Web3 NFT OGs uh, got together. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting the, the owner of the company that bought out Pixelmon. And, and my, first, my first question to him after shaking his hand was, are you fucking nuts, right? Um, again, I, I think people overhype yeah, but it is it is with this new generation, right? I, I tend to be more of a boomer, but it's very um, it's very like this generation to think that you know any news is not bad news, right? So I met him. I don't know what they did with it after that. Um, oh, dude, did, did, yeah, did you get to meet him as well? Are they still are they still going? Dude, Wimps, 200 million is an insane amount of money to blow on an auto battler and a half working uh, exploration. I, I think it's like an exploration side game, right? Wimps, I fully agree with you, dude. But that's the reason why, I mean, I was I was I was in the first cohort, right, of uh, of Gods Unchained. I think I have like 400, 500,000, uh, I have like 300,000 cards, right? Um, but the main reason why I decided to go so hard with Immutable was because, again, they, they had, they're a game company and they're a game company that is going to take a while to develop, right? Uh, but they had a lot of strong fiscal... And sorry, am I moving in the right direction? I believe I am. They had a lot of strong fiscal responsibility within the way that they were approaching things. And, you know, I, I think that Immutable right now, I believe that their market cap based on their last round of raise is like somewhere around three to five billion dollars uh, with another insane amount of um, with another insane amount of uh, of a war chest to be able to further develop the game right which is why I love Gods Unchained it's, it's the very first TCG right um, all along with uh, I think Splinterlands came in a tiny bit later but it was the very first TCG to launch on Ethereum and, you know, they've just, you know, put their heads down, you know, ignored bull market and bear market and continue to do what they were going to do. Yeah, dude, I remember. It. So I, I would tell you guys this. Um, then my number one piece of advice for you guys, if, you know, when, if and when the bull run actually does come back, uh, 
you know, ignore all of the influencers, <laughs> ignore all of the VCs because the VCs are pushing the influencers. Uh, I cannot tell you the number of VC partners that, that I was friends with uh, during the last bull run who told me I was missing out uh, by not acquiring Alluvium assets, right? And among those, they also asked me to invest in SBF. <laughs> it didn't do, didn't do either of those. <laughs> Dude, the VC grift, the PE VC grift is real, bro. The ultimate scammers. Uh, you have like a scamming hierarchy uh, within the NFT land, within NFT world, right? You have uh, you have all of those influencers who don't understand what NFTs are outside of PFPs, right? So you got those guys, um, you know, to the moon, wag me, dude. I crit. It's I, you know. So one of the issues that I have, I don't have a, I don't have an issue with people saying GM. I understand that it's the culture, but the reason why I cringe whenever anyone says GM, GM, or GN, GN, is because it's part of that entire culture of, 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 of you know, wag me, right? Which, which, no, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it if you, uh, if you're stupid enough to jump on a Twitter Spaces and listen to somebody and spend ten thousand dollars, right? Um, we're gonna make it. And then the other one was BTFD, buy the fucking dip. It's, it's just not culturally, it, it, it's like, it's sheep mentality, right? It's, it's, it's sheep culture, it's, it's sheep culture. Uh, you know, you'll never see any of those influencers say, hey, these are the numbers, here's the analytics, hey, here's my spreadsheet, this is why it's gonna, I think it's gonna work, but do your own diligence and do your own research. Um, it, it's always, it, it's like, it's a perpetual flow uh, of Wagme, right? Which is why I distance myself from the NFT, the, from the NFT community, um, you know, during during that point in time, as well as during, as well as during the bear run. Dude, that is beautiful, 200%. I wish I could have gotten that on my Epic, but you know, we're gonna take it. So at the end of the day, I mean, do your own research, right? I'm pegging, again, the only reason why I'm streaming is because I enjoy this part of the game. Uh, when I actually group up with my teammates, I probably will enjoy playing the actual game as well. Uh, but, you know, again, I, I enjoy this virtual economy, uh, which is why I do it. The only reason why I stream again is because it's on my own terms. I can get to hang out with you guys one-on-one, -on -one, uh, talk a little bit of shit, uh, and, uh, and, and make a tiny bit of money while I'm at it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, there's nothing, the only other thing that I might, would, I'm, I might stream uh, would, be, uh, would be Gods and Chain, but I'm so terrible at it. I mean, I have, I, I have a lot of great cards, but I'm atrocious. With people, it's amazing, right? Um, but you know, hopefully that party system improvements come through. That, that's, dude, you're gonna take it. But dude, dude, I, I need the, <laughs> I need the third bar. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. We'll get there, guys. Wimps, what do you, uh, what do you farm? Are you farming, uh, are you farming time wardens, or are you farming, are you farming armories and forges? What's your, what's your thoughts on, uh, what's your thoughts on what's the best play here? And we're finally gonna we're finally gonna craft that uh, that epic. So we crafted one epic yesterday. I think I crafted an epic before. I can take a look and see. I think we have like three epics going at the moment. No. So this is our third epic that we're going to. Wimps, you're doing the you're doing the grind, dude. That's exactly what I'd be doing if if I wasn't in the situation where I'm in right now. Most likely, I would be selling. I would be buying. I would be buying multiple, multiple time. Because look, and again, uh, not financial advice, not regulatory advice. I have, I learned how to say that, um, sig you know, significantly during the last uh, bull and bear run. But um, probably the way that I would have done it if I was starting from scratch, right? If I had like, if I had like a thousand dollars to play with the game. Oh, perfect. We at least we got one. So if if we had like if I had like a, a thousand dollars to play the game, I would have definitely bought like four, you know, one space, one cheap space, and four time wardens, uh, and then after that, you know, with the pricing that it is right now, you know, I was doing the math with uh, with DC yesterday on private chat. Essentially, you can pay off for your time warden within within twelve months, right? At, at, sorry, sorry, with, uh, within two months at these current market pricings, right? Um, 
you know, and then all, and then after that, you know, given the fact that we're so far away from actual launch and actual adoption, uh, it would give you so much time. And sorry, guys, it's it, this is an epic, so I'm going to be a little bit stupid here and 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 just keep trying to like get that 50 because it really, it, it really is a, a difficult opportunity to come by. Dude, is this even working? Dude, I'm wasting so much money doing this. Dude, come on. There you go. There you go. There you go. 100%. 100% on an epic hourglass. And as you guys can see, it's going to take me <laughs> four days and eight hours. Um, so hopefully you guys will be able to see that stream. Um, that stream later on. Dude, I mean, I think, again, Undisputed noobs is and uh, undisputed noobs and the audience that are coming in here are extremely savvy uh, to the um, to the mechanics uh, to the mechanics of the game. Oh, are you serious? The only thing is it's soulbound, right? I can't wait. I, I mean, they really should not make cracked hourglasses soulbound, and they don't. Again, they don't need to be NFTs, but. If, if they can be, you know, again, dropped, I mean, I, I think that would be wonderful. Um, that would be wonderful for, for organizations like guilds or, or friends and stuff. And, you know, that way people, you know, I love to make money, but at the same time, the, 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 the success, my success is predicated on the game success, right? Um, you know, it'd be perfect if you could drop cracked hourglasses because again, then, then you know, you're gonna be able to, to help people who can't who don't own a time warden or we can't afford um afford anything like that they're afraid of botting by doing that i think they worry about adding code because that adds it does it adds another layer of exploits but what happens what happens if oh I, i'm sure that there are more complicated exploits than what i'm thinking about right now but what happens if you could only drop a cracked hourglass within a personal space and people who are only have been invited to your personal space are able to touch that hourglass, right? I'm sure there are, I, I've heard that there were like attacks on the client side where people are like speed running dungeons. I haven't seen that for myself yet. <laughs> Again, when there's money to be made, there are going to be nefarious actors. And the, but the thing is, you know, what I've seen from nefarious actors within the space is that their risk taking or their risk uh, appetite, <coughs> excuse me, their risk appetite uh, for doing bad things within the ecosystem or within the different projects itself extends itself into the way that they manage their actual money. Um, the number of whales or NFT whales that you're gonna see this bull run uh, is going to be significantly, significantly decreased versus what we saw previously. Uh, there was a Chinese group somehow getting duplicates. Oh, what? So are you, are you talking about getting like dupes in like Diablo, where, where you can like, where you were like dropping an item and then clicking at the same time, like from Diablo two? <laughs> Plus, Mister, we're letting you claim and. Dude, shoot, that's insane. Oh, that's insane, man. Plus the mystery chest we're letting you claim endlessly and a lot of accounts got banned for that. Dude, serves them right. Serves them right. Oh my God, I don't understand. I mean, I guess I guess you give, you give a guy an inch and they take a foot, right? Uh, but I mean, the good news, right? And the good news is I'm so happy that this game hasn't blown up yet, right? Because it gives up, it gives the devs an opportunity to sort everything out. Can you imagine if this is like the axie of Web three, uh, in the next Web three bull run? Every single so look, and we're gonna go. Uh, we can go to my throne room and we can have a little uh, uh, a little whale D shark chats uh, for the remaining. I would say for like the remaining twenty minutes of this. But hold on, let, let me get to my throne room with my dinosaurs. Hold on. And I'll share with you guys a little of my thoughts in terms of what's coming up next. Uh, and I'd love to hear what you guys think as well, because I've been so isolated from the Web3 space. Um, dude, I can't sit, right? All right, anyway, we can we can look at the dinosaurs. Uh, there you go, you can see my face while I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> look, I, I think at the end of the day, I mean, there are two questions on any major investors or, or major, I hate to call us investors because we're really alt alternate, alternate asset managers alternate asset managers um there's only two questions on our mind right now uh, three questions on our mind so i think the first question is you know if you're investing in alternate assets like nfts 
uh, is our NFT still a thing? Uh, and you really wouldn't know unless you're looking at all these projects and understanding what the major corporations are doing. But are NFTs still a thing? The second question is, when is bear market done? And then the third question that you're really asking yourself is, when are you know what what are what are the um, what are the projects that are going to launch the are that are going to launch you know the new NFT bull run right? Um, you know, sub questions to that are once you've identified those projects, you know, what's the best way for me to enter so that I, number one, have assets that can capital appreciate during that point in time. And for you, for those of you who, for those of you who, who, who don't know some of this terminology, I'll, I'll break it down very easily. Capital appreciation is simply, you know, it's, it's the value of the asset that you hold and an asset is an object it could be a stock it could be a it could be a piece of land it could be uh it could be a collectible uh but capital appreciation is essentially you know how much in value does that does that object or does that asset increase in value right um so i think the question the sub questions were how do how do i approach these different games whereby i can get capital appreciation uh i can also have access to liquidity and I can also liquidify my assets at the right time so that I don't get caught holding the bag. I think those are, I think those are the three, I think those are the three, the three questions. Um, the, sorry, those are the six questions, right? Wims, I fully agree with you. I mean, NFT used to be such a beautiful word. Um, the, the NFT influencers that you see today just totally fucking wrecked it, right? Uh, they wrecked it by, you know, again, removing all maturity and, and logic from the space, uh, whereby it was, a, it was a get fucked, you know, hype train, right? Um, and, you know, I will never speak to those people ever again. Um, I was very quiet over the last, you know, 8 to 12 months because I was busy doing my own thing and getting away from all that toxicity. And, you know, the, the idiotic thing about it is the majority of your, and I hate to use the term again, but NFT influencers, um, they've been proven to be they've been proven to be um, to be to be scam artists, right? Um, but the thing is people are so blind by the pursuit of wealth that they fail to realize that But anyway, so I just want to have a quick chat with you guys You know what I see right now and you guys can again chime in and chat uh, What I see for the time being and you know, I feel a similar sense in the air that I did in 2021 um, 2021 Dude, sorry, 2020, 2020, 2020. So, you know, when you looked at 2020, when you looked at anywhere from 2019 to 2018 to 2020, uh, there was this huge bear market, right? There was this huge bear market uh, mentality and no one ever knew whether or not crypto was gonna be a thing. NFTs were not even on the radar, right? I, I think in 20, 2018, 2019, it was a lot of crypto and the emergence of DeFi, right? Um, it was eventually the emergence of DeFi plus the emergence of NFTs that led us into the next crypto bull cycle, right? There, the six, the five, sorry, the four to five month period before December 2020, no, December 2019, uh, yeah, December 2020, basically what you started to see was you started to see these murmurings and bubbles of activity. Uh, within the Web3 space, right? That's correct, Wimps. COVID helped a lot because, you know, people started collecting Pokemon cards, right? Um, and because they collected Pokemon cards, essentially, when they heard about NFTs and you could collect digital objects, they basically moved across uh, to, those collect to those digital collectibles as well. But again, December 2020, you heard a bit of mummerings. You saw the emergence of DeFi. Uh, no, DeFi was already running, but you saw DeFi grow quite a bit. You saw uh, NFTs grow from the sale of the $69 million people, right? Um, so you saw that, you know, you saw that, you know, small push, even though we were still in a bear market, you saw that small push. And I think the very start of the bull market for NFTs all of a sudden was I would wake up every single day and, you know, the whale collection of NBA Top Shots originally was probably about, I want to say it was about $200,000. And we saw that value go from $200,000 to $2 million to $3 million to $30 million and $40 million over the course of a period of a month, right? Um, 
it really was it really was you know at that point where we hit like full uh, we hit full bull market fever and I remember hopping on Clubhouse and you know it was like a 24-hour NFT party and people were just talking about NFTs all the time now what I'm trying to say here is I'm not trying to be an old man and go through and reaccounting the stories. I mean, there are lessons to learn from it, right? So when you talk about, when you look at how that NFT market cycled, it cycled from art to sport collectibles. And then after that, it went into music for a tiny bit, for a brief bit and only on a project level basis. And then after that, it went into... Uh, PFPs were last. It went into digital land. Uh, gaming assets, sorry, before Digital Land, it went into gaming assets with Axis Infinity. Then after that, it went into Digital Land with the Sandbox. Uh, and then after that, we ended the bull cycle with, um, we started the bull cycle with, uh, with the, sorry, the bear cycle uh, with PFPs, right? And PFPs is where everybody who made money previously all got wrecked, right? Um, I swear to God, I hope PFPs do not make a comeback. It's a little bit difficult. Um, it is a little bit difficult uh, to to imagine that it can't make a comeback given how much given how much uh, stupidity there is out there, right? That that really is paying ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars for a JPEG, right? It's not art. It's not anything. Um, dude, it got horribly cringe, and the cringe continues. Like once I hear PFP, I just shut down, dude. Uh, the only PFP project, and it's not really even a PFP project that I ever bought into was, uh, or I really enjoyed myself in, was Clonex, right? Uh, I have like, I have like a hundred pairs of shoes uh, sitting in a warehouse somewhere, um, where I have, you know, all of the, uh, I have all of the, uh, the, the, what do you call it? The collaboration with Nike. So I have like a hundred Nike, I have a hundred, um, I have a hundred Nike Airs uh, sitting in, sitting in some warehouse uh, in Southeast Asia. Yeah, I I I I I think the team, you know, the team the team the team really needs to sort it out, right? Uh, did I really wimps? Which one did I buy? <laughs> I did. It wasn't the uh, the two million six Murakami drip, was it? <laughs> that was the most I've ever spent on a single NFT, by the way. Uh, I hope it wasn't you, <laughs> or I hope it was you, and you're living a really comfortable life at the moment. I think I spent like two million dollars. Was it? I, I spent $2 million on the clone X that had the most number of Murakami drips, right? But I also own the rarest uh, clone X uh, on Rarity Sniper today. Dude, with $2 million, I, I would have done the same. <laughs> But dude, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think I bought, uh, so I have this clone, I have this clone where it's, you know, just a face, we can, we can do it at some point in time, I'll go through my collection and show you guys, but it's just got a single helmet and it's ranked the number one rarest, you know, clone X in the entire market, right? The only thing I do love about clone X, dude, is I don't, I never need to buy shoes again, right? I got like free shoes and shit. I got, I got like a hundred pairs of shoes and a hundred t-shirts and, you know, I wasn't paying attention, so I didn't, I didn't do any of the minting ones. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's the red, it's the one wearing the varsity jacket and and the full helmet. Dude, I got a hundred, I got a hundred shoes, dude, and I would be, again, when once this channel starts to build up a bit, I will give away free shit, right? I'm if you know me in real life, uh, I'm actually a minimalist, right? Um, I will give away shit, right? So hopefully it gets to the point uh, whereby you know this channel builds up enough of a following. I'll give a free, I'll give away free shit every single stream, right? Uh, just because I know that you guys will put it to better use than I will. Um, Lang, I, I store it in a warehouse. So where I live in Southeast Asia, and I wasn't always in Southeast Asia, right? I think when you guys knew me, I was, I was in, I was in Hong Kong. But where I stay in Southeast Asia, I can actually, um, I can actually rent warehouses pretty cheap. So. You know, I got a, I got a hundred pairs of shoes. I got a hundred T-shirts. You know, if I reached out to the founders, I'm very tight with the founders of, of Artifact, right? So if I did reach out that, uh, if I did reach out to them about it, um, I'm sure they would love to sponsor some shit. Hold on one second, dude. I gotta, I gotta see what Wimps actually, um, what Wimps actually sold me. All right, Clonex, number one eight four seven four. Let me see what which ones this is. Oh, dude, I love this one. Uh, you you caught me as I was. Um, 
you caught me as I was uh, as I was collecting all of the drips. So I was literally trying to buy every single Clone X that had like the most amount of Murakami drips. And it, again, it, it paid out well for me, right? The number of Murakami drip shoes that I have exceeds the number of alien shoes or whatever shoes that I have today. Um, so it was a lot of fun. But again, Wimps, that, that's the only, that is the only project or the only PFP project that I'd ever play simply because it's, it's avatar based and I actually get good shit, right? It's, it's like free shopping. Imagine this, I have a hundred pair of, of, I think they're Nike Air Forces, right? I have a hundred pair of Nike Air Forces just sitting in a warehouse. All of them are my size. Um, I'm a size 11, uh, but all of them are my size. If I wear one pair every single year, or let's say let's say I decide to to mess to to to, to uh, juke it up a bit, and I wear two pairs every single every single year, dude, I got enough pairs of shoes to last me for like the next uh, for like the next freaking like 50 years. I'm dead by then, dude. Um, so you know, you know, was it worth it to invest that much or to play with that much money with Clone X, uh, dude? I, I mean, I got a bunch of cool shoes, right? Um, so I enjoyed it, but. You know, back to my main point before I end the session. And again, we can always do this, you know, after I've done all of my sweatshop work. If you guys do have questions or do have um, uh, do have questions or do have uh, discussion topics you want to bring up, I can always come into the throne room. We can have a we can have a nice economy chit chat. Um, Wimp saying you need artifact dress shoes though for your formal events. So, uh, dude, I'm at the point in life where. I go to formal events in, uh, in in nice Uniqlo uh, and sometimes Crocs, right? Because I just can't be I can't be half-assed anymore. I spent the better half of my life wearing three-piece suits and uh, leather shoes. Uh, for the next half of my life, uh, I'm literally going pure Uniqlo and Crocs. Uh, I have so many Croc clogs and 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 Croc. Uh, you know, regular Crocs. I was actually going to buy the Lightning McQueen Crocs as well because I think they're just kind of fun. Um, but anyway, you will not see me at any formal event uh, with uh, with 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 anything other than artifact shoes and and, and Crocs, right? Um, at the end of the day, you reach a point in life where you, where you realize that I don't need to dress up for anybody. I don't really need to dress up for anything. Um, you know, either you accept me as I am, or I'm just not attending. Right, so that's that's a point in life that I am in right now, where I just you know again, sorry for the, sorry for the profanity, but I just don't give a fuck, <laughs> right? Um, and you know that's that's the way I live it out. I, do I still enjoy good food? Yeah. Will I still go to, um, will I still go to like a, a Michelin star restaurant? Yeah, I will. Uh, but will I wear a suit to go there or a collar shirt? Absolutely not. I'm gonna wear. You know, I'm gonna wear a pair of baggy pants, a baggy dress pants. I'm gonna wear a black T-shirt. You know, if I have to, I'll wear, you know, a street style black blazer, and and I'll wear my Crocs, right? Langa asking, when am I coming back to the island? It's going to be a while, my friend. It's going to be a while, my friend. So I think uh, some of you might know that I made huge inroads into Madeira. Uh, it's going to be a while. Uh, there's just nothing happening there right right now, um, but. Always invite you to come across to Southeast Asia and come visit me, my friend. So I guess just to wrap up, what I'm trying to say is that I do believe we are seeing the bubblings of the ending of the bear market. I think you're seeing growth spurts in certain areas and people saying, wow, what bear market, right? When that starts to happen in enough places, essentially what you're going to see is that you see the cyclical turn of the bear to the bull. The only thing I would warn all of you guys is, so far in the last decade, bear market bull markets have been very solid on cyclicality. It's always been a two-year bear market and a one-year bull. So if we do end the bear market in December of this year, essentially what you're going to see is a one-year, not, not an extended, right? Don't listen to don't listen to some of the economists or microeconomist experts out there, you know, who have a huge Twitter following that were calling for an extended bull market, right? Or extended bull cycle. Their extended bull cycle saw Ethereum drop from 4,000 to 1,600, right? It's a one-year bear, it's a one-year bull cycle. It's a one-year bull cycle up to now. So when you look at that one-year bull cycle, the reason why I'm playing big time is because when I look at the number of games that are out there, and again, I love Immutable, I love Gods Unchained, but nothing has the same playability and the same 
token tokenomics and the same market economics, the same NFT market economics that I see that Big Time has. Now, coming back to the, uh, I would say, just thinking about what happened, uh, you know, with with Axie Infinity, doing a direct comparison, and sorry, I think they're gonna kick me out over here, but doing a comparison, um, you know, Big Time has significantly more, Big Time has significantly more playability than Axie Infinity ever did, right? Um, it has a lot more sticking power. Uh, it's not as complicated. Uh, I remember coming out of Axie streams with Chief and just having like a headache, right? Because I didn't understand what to do and when. Um, and it's actually fun to play. People aren't just playing because it's 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 somewhat it's somewhat to earn. Um, Wimps, I fully agree with you. I mean. I'm purely about analytics, and when I look at when I look at the demographics that are streaming right now, uh, you see a majority of them are actually from South America. I, again, I'm not familiar with you know Espanol and 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 different South American dialects, but you know what I'm seeing is is Latin American dialects, so I'm assuming it's Latin America. Um, I'm not seeing as much Philippines, and I can probably understand because the demand to be able to, the technical demands to be able to play big time are significantly higher than it was to play Axios, right? You could play Axie on like a, on a cell phone. Um, you know, hopefully big time gets to the point where you might be able to play a, a scaled down version on an on a, on a iPad, right? But I doubt it's even on their roadmap. So there are going to be significantly different things to this. now. Last few points, and Wim, sorry, man, you, you got me. You, you got my verbal diarrhea started. Uh, there's so many thoughts that I've had that I've just been bottling up for like the last eight months. But um, when you, uh, Wimps, I tried to work it on my ROG, uh, my ROG ally. It doesn't work. It really doesn't work. You know, I, I wish I could have used my ROG ally to play this game. It sputters like nobody's business. Um, but anyway. Uh, you know, I think this will be different. I think there are a couple of things I think those who are listening in need to look out for. The first thing is I do think big time is going to be the Axie Infinity of the next bull cycle, right? Again, do your own research, do your own due diligence, not financial advice, not regulatory advice, all right? But I personally do believe that big time is going to be the Axie, the Axie Infinity equivalent um, uh, for the next bull run, right? Uh, I think that given that, what we're also going to see is people only talk about, and I was in the Discord for a bit, right, uh, yesterday and this morning, people really tend to talk about the, down, the potential downward pressure on the token. Uh, they're always worried that the token price is going to go down. What people don't understand is that when you're in a bull market for NFTs and for NFT and Web3 gaming, essentially what you're going to see is that the... And if you're going to see investors directly buy the token, there's going to be a significant amount of upward pressure, more so than you can even imagine, right? You know, I hate to make predictions, but, you know, could I see, you know, big time going from 18 cents to a dollar or even two dollars or three dollars in a bull market? Absolutely. Right. Is that warranted? Should that be the case? Absolutely not. Right. Uh, because again, it, it doesn't make any sense, right? Unless the game, you know, became the most popular game in the world. But can that token price escalate 10x? Easy, easy. Is it because people, regular people, are playing big time and regular people are buying big time? No. It's because of institutional money that comes in and wants to have exposure to Web3. The easiest way they can do that without investing directly in the company in order to have liquidity while also having a foot in the game is to directly buy the tokens. And that's where you see the price escalation, right? So I think, again, we are going to see big time lead the charge for Web3 gaming. I think that the demographic is going to be different. It has to be different, right? I, I mean, I have a I have a Zephyrus G14 ROG uh, from 2021. Um, you know, it, it it cannot handle big time, right? That's how that's how. And and again, this 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 laptop from 2021 still sells. I think for for about 800 to 1,000 bucks, right? I literally had to purchase the latest. Um, uh, the latest uh, razor blade. I got a I got a razor blade with a G with a GeForce RTX 4080 to actually play this smoothly while being able to stream at the same time. 
right? So there is going to be a huge barrier for people to be able to play this game in an enjoyable manner unless they, they optimize the way that it's being set up right now. But what we are going to see instead is we are going to see a richer demographic, right? We're going to see a more empowered demographic, at least monetarily, from South America, from America, from Europe, uh, from Russia, uh, from a bunch of different places, right? So I think that's where you're going to see the draw from this game. And I think it's gonna be a lot more sustainable. The earnings are also a lot more sustainable, right? We were talking, I was talking to, to, to you guys as well as DC about, um, about what I would do if I was starting out from scratch. I mean, let's just do the math here. And this is the very last point that I'll make before I hop off stream. But, you know, let's talk about the math here. Uh, if I had a thousand dollars and if time, let's ignore the cost of time crystals, let's ignore the cost of, uh, let's ignore the cost of uh, space and assume that we have a space. I, and, and I bought four time wardens, $250. I have enough time crystals. Essentially then every two days, I would have, every two days I would have four time crystal. I would have four hour glasses, uh, four hour glasses, uh, per two days, so that would be 15 cycles in a month. So I would have 60 hourglasses every single month. 60 hourglasses every single month times 12 is $720 a month for doing almost jack shit, dude. <laughs> Dude, you know you're making seven hundred and you're making seven hundred and twenty dollars, uh, and you spent one thousand. Oh, dude, shoot, damn. Oh wow. Uh, I think I think that math is good. I, I think there might be some slight mistakes there, but seven hundred and twenty dollars every single month, and essentially within month one and a half, you've totally covered your costs uh, for that initial investment. Um, it's like one hundred thirty. Uh, just talking about the common. Common is twelve dollars per hourglass right now. Uh, I think the Time Wardens were, you know, they used to be 250, they're like 347 now, right? So you can literally cover your cost. You can literally literally cover the, your cost of, um, of setting up something like that within, within, two, within two months, right? Um, which again, and then after two months, every single thing that you make is profit. You're, and we're all assuming that this is the beginning of the game, right? Uh, if you're assuming that this is the beginning of the game, again, there are there is going to be downward pressure eventually. But you know, even if you have that, you're making 500. You're going to be able to accrue more time wardens. You know, if you build like a a, a 20 strong common time warden factory, uh, essentially what happens is you're going to be able to uh, you're, you're going to, you're going to be able to make a pretty decent living for as long as the lifetime of this game, right? <laughs> Dude, this is gonna be a lot of fun. So what I'm saying is that if you do your math, if you keep your eyes open, there are opportunities to own. You know, are you gonna go 100x? I don't know, right? I, I couldn't tell you I would have. we would have gone 100x on NBA Top Shots. Can't tell you we would have gone 100x on PAC. Um, I, 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 I can't, you know, again, I, I'd be, I'd be, um, I would not be I would not be mortal if I could if I could see these things, right? So Langa is asking the key question here: How long do you think the game will survive? Um, okay, so let's talk about this. Good games have a survivability rate of what uh, World of Warcraft has survived for 20 years, right? Uh, close to 20 years. Let's talk about let's talk about you know a mediocre game. You know what's the peak? The peak is 10, right? I think a game peaks across 10. I mean, League of Legends, 10 easy, right? It's still love playing it. Um, <clears throat> when you look at it, there's still two more years of development as Wimps has pointed out. So essentially you have two months. And again, there are, there's gonna be, gonna be constant bear and bull bursts, right, throughout the entire thing. Um, you know, a constant, a, constant, a constant thing, right? Um, and you know, if that's two plus 10, essentially I will be over 50, right? <laughs> Uh, by the time this game, you know, takes its dying breath. But, you know, as a merchant, as an investor, it's my duty to make sure that I'm helping the game at the point where it needs help and I'm taking returns off the table uh, when it makes sense for me and not being overly greedy, right? So, Lang, I, I think we're early. Uh, like I said, it's beautiful that we're early because there are just so many things that this game needs to sort out from a technical perspective. There's so many things that this game needs to sort out from an economic basis, but that doesn't mean you can't start, you know, doing the merchant thing uh, and developing a means of passive income 
uh, hopefully if this game takes off, right? Guys, we went for much longer than I thought I would. I was, I was just speaking with Langa for probably like the beginning half of the stream. I will always make sure that the team sends out a notification when I'm going live. Uh, so guys, do make sure that you're following the Whale members Twitter. The other thing that you can do is because my playtime really depends on when my Time Wardens open up, I can probably assume that I will be streaming tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, so feel free, to, feel free to do that and I will make sure that I add it into my Twitch schedule. Um, you know, loved hanging out with everybody. It was a bunch of fun. I, we had a wonderful conversation, very insightful. I love these sort of conversations that are based on data, uh, that are based on logic. Um, again, I'm not the guy who you're gonna see crushing it in a, in a, in a prestige dungeon. Hopefully one day I will be. Uh, 3 p.m. Uh, plus eight GMT, plus eight GMT. I'm always plus eight GMT for the next four months, guys, all right? Guys, it was wonderful to see all of you. Wimps, Langa, thank you so much for being so active in chat. I love interacting with my audience. So even if it's to say hello, you know, drop a hello. I'll say a hi back uh, and I'll, I'll, say a, I'll say a thank you for joining us. Um, but thank you everyone for being here. I think we had a very insightful conversation and I look forward to hanging out with everybody again tomorrow. Take care, guys.